What up YouTube? My name is Marvin and today I'm gonna help you to get the biggest, thickest, crunchiest, meatiest, biggest bass tone. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. You're gonna get a good bass tone by watching this video. Let's dive right in. In no particular order whatsoever, number one, change your strings. I get it. Musicians, yeah, we don't got money. Yeah, hmm, yeah, I've been there. Change your strings. I know you think, oh yeah, that new overdrive pedal. Oh, that new EQ pedal. Yeah, it's gonna change my tone. Change your strings. I'm guilty of this myself. I've seen a lot of bassists think that their older strings have oomph, warmth, and whatever, insert word here. Strings wear out, you know? Nothing lasts forever in life, and strings are one of those things. They wear out. Eventually, you have to get new strings. And don't get me wrong, bass strings are more expensive than guitar strings, but you save some money and change your strings. Trust me, it's worth it. Number two, another way to change your bass tone, change your pickup height. Doesn't matter what kind of pickups you have, active, passive, J pickups, uh, precision bass pickups, uh, EMGs, whatever. You'd be surprised how big of a difference that the height really makes. Remember that the strings, they oscillate. And that oscillation is what the pickups are picking up. And, you know, obviously the distance going further or closer is uh, what's going to change it. But remember, depending on the type of pickup, that can also change how it oscillates. So like if you have passive pickups, they have a stronger magnetic pull. So they can actually pull on the string harder and that adds a really big difference in the tone. Active pickups don't really do that, but just keep that in mind. Like you can do a lot of subtle changes with just the pickup height and even the pickup that you decide to use. A lot of basses that have two pickups have that for a reason. You have two options. You can use the neck pickup for generally a warmer sound, depends on the pickup. The bridge pickup is more of like an attacky, more like in your face kind of sound. And then you can always mix them too. Mess around with your pickups, the pickups you select and the height of the pickups. I'll get you some good sounds as well. Number three, learn how to use your bass's controls. Now when I say that, I mean like if you have a, a tone knob, if you have a three band EQ, two band EQ, 17 band EQ, learn how to use all of that. They're there to give you more versatility. Even if you mess around with the volume knob on your bass, especially if you're playing with a tube amp or pedals that are sensitive to the volume of your instrument, you can have a drastic change in tone just by reducing your volume by half and not having it send out as hot of a signal. And do the same thing with your EQ. If you have an active EQ, cut some bass, boost some bass, cut some mids, uh, boost some mids, cut some treble, boost some treble, change, you know, all those parameters and just play around with it. You can even do this with your tone knob. Put your tone knob all the way down. Put your tone knob all the way up. Put your tone knob in the middle. You know, mess around with that. A lot of people forget that you can do that and change the tone of your bass. It's called a tone knob. That's, you know, like try it out. It may, it'll make a big difference if you really try it. Trust me. Number four, dial your amp in correctly. Now, this is very subjective because there's so many different kinds of amps out there. I mean, I, I can't really give you a hard rule on how to dial in an amp. I can make a whole video on how to dial in an amp. This is the way that I approach it and I got this from gigging and just playing shows. A lot of the time, I never got to play with an amp that I was familiar with. I always had to mess around with controls and different things that I wasn't really familiar with. When you're setting up and trying to get on stage and get set up within maybe five to 10 minutes, which is usually what you're gonna get when you're you know, a nobody like me. You gotta do it pretty quickly. If you're not familiar with the bass amp that you're about to use, this is what I generally do. I keep all of the EQ in the middle. So bass, mids, maybe you have low mids, high mids, and treble. Leave all of that in the middle. Put the gain in the middle. And when you turn the amp on, bring the volume to where it's comfortable for you to hear. Like where it's good enough where the sound guy can hear you and everyone can hear you, but you can really hear yourself. Then play around with the gain knob first. Get the kind of drive or get the uh, amount of gain that you want in your signal and mainly stay on that because when you mess with the EQ, I've noticed that depending on the amp that you have, it doesn't make that big of a difference. 
but the gain will make a much bigger difference. Some amplifiers, when you increase the gain too much, it actually increases the amount of bass. Some amps, when you increase the gain, they increase a lot of distortion. That might not be something you want. Generally, that's what I would do. I'll put everything in the middle, put the gain in the middle, play around with that after you get your volume set, and then you can fine tune everything else. But at the end of the day, even after all of that, if you can't figure it out, just leave everything in the middle and do your show. It's boring, whatever, but you should mostly be okay if you set up your amp with everything in the middle. I found that most amps that I've tried, if you put it in the middle, maybe you play around with the gain like I said, but everything in the middle and then you adjust your volume, generally you'll be okay. As long as it's a decent amp, it's not gonna sound bad. It's better you do that than you scoop all your mids and boost all your treble thinking you can't hear it and then you sound horrible because the amp is just not made to do X, Y, and Z. Remember, every amp is set up differently. So if you have it in the middle, I think you should be safe. At least in my experience, I was mostly safe. I've never had an issue putting everything in the middle, playing around with the game, and adjusting the volume so that everybody can hear me. Tip number five, refine your technique. Some people say that like tone isn't in the hands, it's in the gear, or it's in the amp, or the speaker, or the mic. That's true, and I, I don't know. When it comes to guitar, it's not really that noticeable. When it, when it comes to bass though, you can really hear the difference in a player. And what I mean is that like, if you really want to sound a certain way, you have to really play the instrument. You play with conviction. You know, don't strike the strings really soft unless that's the sound you're going for. Don't strike it really hard unless that's the sound that you're going for. Play around with different ways that you know to play your bass and refine what it is that you want to sound like. You might never sound like Victor Wooten or whatever bass player you want to sound like. But the important thing is that you want to try and sound like yourself. Only you can sound like you. And when you refine your technique, you should be able to play around with the way that you play your bass and find something that you actually enjoy. And if you don't, then your technique might actually be off. It might be something else. And it's best to try and do this without any effects. Use a really simple amplifier, really simple setup. Even on your bass, if you have EQ, turn off all the EQ or set them to neutral so that it's just you and the bass. And really listen to the way that your hands make a difference in the tone. To give an example, for me personally, I tend to have my bass EQ'd in a way where if I play soft, it sounds normal. But if I play hard, you start hearing more of the high mids and the highs accentuating everything. When I'm playing on my K5, I have my mid-range all the way up at the highest mid-range setting so that when I do my slaps and pops for certain songs, they come out really clear. But if I wanna go down to a classic sound, I actually play softer on my bass. If I want it to sound like a regular bass, I do that. That variety, while not even touching any pedals, any EQ, I mean, I, I EQ the bass, but I mean like it's all in my hands. I play softer when I want a softer, more traditional sound. When I need all the heat and aggression that my K5 can deliver, I hit harder and that gives it to me. Yes, it's in the gear, but my gear wouldn't do that if it wasn't in my hands. I hope that makes sense. Very, if you're playing soft, playing hard, where on the bass you're playing. For example, here, I normally play right here. Right where my hand is resting, that's where I normally play. Maybe you wanna move it up. Maybe you wanna move it down. It's much different depending on where you put your hands. The way you slap, if you slap soft, or if you slap hard. You know, all that stuff makes a difference. And that's all related to your technique. So refine your technique. Really try to refine it and you will find your sound in your hands. Now let's say you mess with the pickup height. Let's say you change your strings, good for you. Let's say you refined your technique on bass. Let's say you got familiar with all your controls and you dialed your amp in correctly. And your tone still sucks. In that case, my last tip, number six, I think, should be number six. My last tip, invest in some pedals. This here is my actual personal pedal board that I use with my band, Rochambeau. I don't really use a lot of effects when it comes to bass in my band. It's a pretty small setup. I have, this is a tuner pedal from Digitech. This is my hyperluminal compressor from Dark Glass. This is the pork and pickle that I demoed in one of the videos earlier by Wayhuge. It's an overdrive and fuzz. This one is actually the newest pedal I got. This is a Boss Multi, Multi Overtone, I'm sorry. I forgot the name, Multi Overtone. And this is just a Digitech Bass Synth Wah. So now with these five effects, I'm not gonna get giant differences in tone. I mean, I do, 
but these aren't really exactly to make my tone better. These are just to give me different flavors. My compressor is just because I play five string bass and just keeps everything even. My overdrive, I honestly only have this pedal if I'm playing a bass amp that doesn't have tube overdrive. Of a lot of overdrives I've tried, this one just, it just works for me. I don't know, I just love it. This pedal, to be honest, I don't know what it does, but it sounds really cool on bass. So that's why I have it. And this one is just a bass synth pedal wah thing. It makes a bunch of different weird synthy sounds. And I like to do that just with experimentation. It also has a really good octaver in here, which you'd be surprised. And that was the main reason I actually bought the pedal in the first place. But playing around with a lot of the other sounds, I found that it's a really fun pedal. So all of these are pretty utilitarian, but also just to give me different flavors. I bring up pedals because once you get everything else figured out, maybe you're just almost there, but not just exactly there, then I would recommend investing in some pedals because pedals are a really excellent and not too expensive way to change your sound completely or subtly, sub, subtly? With some subtlety, sorry, I don't know what my brain did there, but with some subtlety so that you can actually improve your sound and get something interesting and unique where people will remember you for your bass tone. I'm no expert at all this stuff, but just as a gigging musician, this is what I have found to help me in my quest for tone, which, you know, everybody's on that quest. It always changes. And it's just a lot of things that can go into it that might go over your head. And that's the point of this video. All of this is stuff that I've actually applied to my personal bass playing to try and get better as a bassist. And not necessarily better in like playing, but just like the sound of my bass because playing in your room is completely different than playing live. And it's completely different than recording and having your bass sit in a musical space perfectly. There's all different ways to do that. So I hope this video was helpful in giving you insight as to how to improve your bass tone. Let me know in the comments the ways that you guys like to improve your bass tone because I'm always curious to see what other people are doing and I just like to see setups and talk, you know? If you like this video, feel free to subscribe, like the video, please. <laughs> Anywho, thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a great day. Daddy. Yes? I got a pee. What's that? I got a pee. You got a pee? No. What did you say? No. Do you want to say hi to the camera? Yes. Come over here. See? <laughs> say hi, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, say hi to YouTube, bro. Stop being so weird. Say hi. Say hello. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> can you please go so I can finish my video? I'm almost done. Come on, let me finish it. No. Go ahead, go, go. Go watch a movie. No. Marv, come on. No. It's my remote.